And there we go. We are live again. Thank the good Lord for all these blessings and mercy. We've made it thus far. Um, guys, thank you for joining me. And I hope you're going to enjoy this stream with me. The funny thing is some of it is unfortunately going to be a little bit old for some of you that's been following me. But I've had um, some requests come through to actually show what I did not show the previous time. So we're going to fill in some blanks. And uh, obviously you guys uh, really need to talk with me and ask your questions and help me fill in those blanks. I mean, it's, it's gonna be a big effort now. So um, we are at Porto. And f I mean, you guys know already, this is my favorite place to come and practice and do circuits and all these things. It just makes it easier for, for me because everything is in a controlled environment and everything just works well. So anyway, um, one of my previous videos started on Twitch, went a fair way into the video and then stopped and then we came to YouTube and uh, the question was asked where's part one because now there's a lot of things we discussed that simply wasn't taken into account you know and I didn't realize um, for one that that it actually had such a big impact so I apologize for that so we're going to try and fix it in this video gentlemen how are you doing are you doing great oh deadly do here okay good stuff Gunnar you say great Jordan Akan you okay I'm okay sir I'm, I'm in teenager mode by the way for your information that's all right just try and stay on topic as best you can then okay okay ladies right. and gentlemen right. I need to be careful what I am talking today <laughs> Yeah, well, you see, I, I'd love to, I'd love to use this video as a kind of a tutorial. So I don't mind a bit of jokes here and there. The people know how we operate already, but um, we obviously want to get a message across. So uh, I want to start my Zebo now. And uh, I, I, I want to ask a question just before sure. starting, sure. sir. Sure. Uh, are you going to be online? Uh, no, I'm not going to fly this online because it's just circuits at Porto. Okay, sir. All In right. this case, I don't need to join you. No, you don't. You can actually fly wherever you want, but we would love your company if you want to chat with us. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start cold and dark, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, a couple of other queries. It, uh, I'm actually putting together a couple of queries and answering a couple of queries in one video. So one of the things we want to look at is also the switch state. So I'm just going to go to a golden dark state and then we can start talking about that a little bit. Ah, virtual sky check. Hello, buddy. All right, so the Zebo is loaded. So one of the things that I see some people have discovered, but some people are yet to discover, and I hope to show some of you guys something you haven't seen before and then give you a reason to use it, is the manage state preset. So if we go to save and load manage state presets, Zebo has given us a couple of options here to save certain switches for certain purposes. All right, so you have a predefined set that you get in a cold and dark state and also in a turnaround state. We go to 
Um, I think it's general ops. Yeah, there we go. There's engine and no run. We've got a cold and dark state and a turnaround state. So Zebo pre-configured. Where am I? There. Um, Zebo pre-configured certain switches to be in certain positions. And what people don't realize is that they can actually save their own states if they don't want to use the specific Zebo switch state. All right, there are then literally three ways of recalling them. You can save a cold and dark state, you can save a turnaround state, or you can have two custom states. Right now, this does not work on every single button. I did test it this morning for someone else, one of the queries that we are answering now. Uh, one or two of the buttons just do not stick. It's not the end of the world because the, the major important ones will work. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown. This is the default state that you will get your Zebo when you download it. You will see, for instance, standby power is guarded, uh, bus transfer is guarded, um, You'll see your utility and your in-flight entertainment, they are both on already. Um, you have your electrical, uh, uh, your engine one and two electrical, um, sorry, let me rephrase that. Engine one and two um, hydraulic pumps um, that runs off your engines, they are on already, whereas the electrical ones are not running, right? So that's a state that they are in. You will also see, for instance, your circulation fans, they are set to auto, um, your engine bleeds are set to on, um, and things like that, guys. So so this also goes for the top. We've got our fly deck recorder, we've got the EEC switches, we've got the navs, you know, all kinds of switch states that we can set. Now, depending on what your SOP is, or the airline that you fly for, or the level that you want to simulate, you can actually go set the switches you want, click on save. The next time you load the Zebo, like we've done just now, all you do is you select the preset switch state number one or number two, whichever one. So you can make your own state for whatever reason, you know, the custom ones. And then obviously if you have saved those switches under the cold and dark heading, because your tablet is set to cold and dark, that is the one that will then load. If you are um, recalling the turnaround state during the startup uh, of the flight, then obviously this one will, will be in place. So I'm just going to show you, I, I changed a couple of the switches. I'm going to click load preset one. And then you're going to see a couple of interesting things. You will immediately notice that we have standby power unguarded, our um, generator disconnect, uh, drive disconnect, um, switches are, are open. You can see the bus transfer is off. Uh, you'll see our circulation fans are off. Our um, uh, engine bleed switches are off. Uh, and so we can continue. In fact, we can even go look at the top here now. You'll see the EEC switches. The guards are open, but they are still on. These are two switches that you can't save them in the off position. They are always on. But at least you can flip the gods all right by this way you can implement the checklist uh, more realistic exactly exactly so there are guys um ew for instance who brought this to my attention um you know that for them it is important to simulate it according to how they flew in the real world or however they know it from you know, other operations. Um, in order to have that, and, and here's the other two, you see cabin utilities and the in-flight entertainment, they are now switched. So depending on the actual SOP slash checklist that you use, you can literally go and set these switches, uh, you know, the way you want them to be. And all you do is, um, I've, I used custom state one. Now there's a custom state two as well. If you don't like, the cold and dark or turn around state, just make your own kind of a thing. And um, I think, I think, and I hope that a lot of people, 
you know that didn't know about this would actually start thinking about maybe using um, you know some of these features over here and like I said you can make it to auto trigger by using those two your, your actual golden arc or turn around or just make your own ones you know and then depending on what you set up it will obviously load does that help anybody guys on discord you're so quiet ladies and gentlemen after this brief information uh, we conclude uh, our video thank you very much for joining so, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just looking through nico at hmm. the moment can you remember the file that those states uh, um, saved in? Yeah, uh, the reason I'm asking, I was just looking if anybody wanted to get back to the default condition as if they'd done a new install. Hmm. How would they do it? Okay, well, there's two ways. I'll drag this back onto the screen just now. All right, you can reset your golden dark switch state or your turnaround switch state. All right, mm. remember when you open the Zebo and you load it, it's either, it, it starts with the setting. It's either going to load in golden dark or turnaround, disregarding any of your settings. It's going to load in, in one of them, right? So if you set up a golden dark situation and you used what I did in the custom section under this section this is what's going to load so to reset it all you have to do is you click that button so it will reset it to the Zebo default the same goes for the turnaround state you can reset the buttons all you have to do to invoke these ones is that you need to restart the Zebo so close explain reopen it go to the Zebo and just you know it will be there all right that's the one way of doing it the other way of doing it is going to your explain a root folder. There is the state file. This is the file that everybody went hunting for. That Zebo said you must delete it. And so many people went and deleted the status because I didn't have it. Oh, I couldn't see it. You know, there was this whole confusion. The state.dat file is what keeps this. All right. So that one you just delete, restart your Zebo, make a new one. Thank you, Gentlemen, Nico. this is very important information. Uh, sometimes uh, Discord has a problem. We have some broken uh, uh, speech here. So this is related to technical issues for your information. So you're saying that Discord's still acting up? Yes. I, I wish I would fix it now. All right, then sorry. If he, no, if he, if he, it's if he, been fine sentence. for me here. Nico, to okay. be honest. Okay, all right, right. Captain Reynolds, welcome and thank you, sir. I um, love to educate people, especially in the Zebo, obviously. So if this has got value to you guys, then I'm happy. Um, you know, we can uh, set states and do everything, and and so so few people use it or know about it. You know, it's like the the flight states we're going to use this as well and i'm going to show the guys who have never seen it how this works as well so we're well, going to do what we can to educate you guys hi angel hello angel yeah Christer. hi angel Christer, um, I find myself in need of setting up a turnaround state as well. I personally don't like the turnaround state that is included in the Zebo because of what Sasso said the other day, the way they do it. I would rather do it the way Ryanair do it in the real world, you know, opposed to just Lost having a couple need. of switches. Sorry? I Back. did lose you just then on Discord. All right. Well, sorry, guys. Discord's messed up way out of my control, unfortunately. Yeah. What I'm getting at is when Harkon had the interruption, I don't think necessarily it's your end. It's Discord itself. It's the server. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I'm looking at the stats for my server here. I've got a ping of one millisecond with an outbound packet loss of 0. point zero percent so it's definitely not my side it's definitely a discord server issue yeah that's right 
that's just a yeah. highlight in that. Okay, cool. yeah. Hello, Paul. Welcome, welcome. Right, so um, what I want to do, I'll, I'll run through all the switches just to make sure that I didn't mess it up because I really don't want to go back and reload everything now. But anyway, um, guys, there are more to this. I don't want to give you too much in one video and go and drive you crazy. But I mean, there's other aircraft presets and stuff that you can go play with here as well. Um, we'll get to that in a different video. Let's take it one step at a time, introduce you to one or two new things, take it further and um, we'll worry about the rest later. Um, I'm also going to show you how the load flight situations work and how to play around with them. Um, before we start setting up, I just also want to show you under the configuration in a realism, I've set the refill time to short. The idea is to fly circuits. So we don't want to sit here and wait for 20 minutes while a fuel truck puts fuel in the aircraft. We just want to load, get it done and, and get going. So we're going to uh, start right there. Um, I like carrying a bit of a load and I like 16.5 for some reason I don't know why it's just it just happened we'll put 4.7 tons in there we'll be flying at the cruise level of um, 11,000 feet uh, which is just above uh, the uh, transition altitude transition altitude is 4,000 so we're gonna have like a real flight but just in a circuit format uh, so that's loaded we can start our uh, flight leg so long and then we can just slowly start working through all the issues. All right, now the other thing I want to show you guys quickly is I'm going to use STKP and I'm going to use the weather from STKP uh, weather presets. So I'm just going to go for cloudy. So let's have a look, see what that looks like. Okay, that's cloudy. Right, the reason I do that is I know what the Q&H is and I also know that the wind is supposed to be calm on the ground which means that I can use either runway 17 or runway 35. We're going to start with runway 35 just for the heck of it. But the beauty of this system, do this, the beauty of the presets is this, at a moment's notice, you know, we can go to stormy weather I see so I can play around with it we can really have fun do you think Uncle John watching us sir I don't know not sure he was not very happy today I don't know um, if he's gonna come on stream Marco I see I think he's there and he's listening to us but he probably. doesn't want to join probably probably you can talk about him maybe Okay, let's let's do our work first and then we do what we want to do later. Okay, so let's quickly set up our pushback. Front to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Right, guys. Call me through the menu when you're ready. So part of the idea of this video is to set up a circuit. Okay, if you just want to jump into the aircraft quickly, just fly to get your fix for the day or whatever, you know, this is a good way of doing it. And you can do it wherever it's suitable, but this is just a nice to have in, in uh, regards to this airport. And you'll see when we do the flight planning just now. Just want to get some life in the aircraft first, and then we'll go over to the flight planning side of things. Just want to make sure that all our guards are down and switches are in the right place now after I fiddled. Alright, so, looks okay to me. By the way, did you guys notice that Zebo has fixed the, somebody called it the Minecraft textures that you guys see? So when you have your reflections on, you don't have all those blotches and big blocks. 
Can you show a specific example for it, sir? Zoom in, zoom out. Well, Arkan, when we did this, you can see there's a reflection on the screens, right? If you go back a version, you'll see that there was blocks. It, it physically had different colored blocks. It looked like a checkerboard or a chessboard. And it's gone. It's now nicely fluid. All nicely done. Right, so, yeah, if you just go back to a previous version, you'll see what happened. Right. Okay, so let's talk about this root story. Let's start this navigation graph. Virtual sky check says uh, IRS alignment. Let me humor him. Let's go do it. Here you go, Krister. Just for you, buddy. Okay, let's set up a new flight. So we're going to go LPPR. LPPR. <laughs> You're welcome. What's happening here? Yeah. Refresh. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so you guys will pick up shortly that. This kind of makes a nice circuit for us. So we're going to use runway 35. We're going to go uh, to the west. So we're going to fly over the ocean. We're going to turn back to Manic. And then from Manic, we're going to pick up our arrival, uh, which should be that one, Able 5C. And we're going to do an RNAV arrival via the Akulu transition and there you go there's a nice circuit for you the trick with this circuit is you need to understand the uh, requirements you need to be above flight level 110 at ablek over there all right very important if you do not file it correctly the zebo is not going to respond correctly so um, you need to be above uh, 110 that's why we're going to fly at 110 because it's 110 at or above all right what we also have here is we have an egnos code so we can fly an action actual, actual lpv approach uh, putting that code into our gls space in our mmr or we can fly al navinav or we can use El Navinav and turn that into an Ian approach where we can actually use the approach button and simulate an ILS. So this airport is very versatile and if you come from the other side you actually have an ILS coming uh, into the other runway. So um, that's one of the reasons I, I choose this airport. Uh, literally there is no real flight but the, the sits in the star just you know flow one into another it makes a really nice circuit for us so we're going to just pin that one to have a point of reference let's just pin the actual airport itself right so then we have our airport as well all right um we can then actually export this what I'm going to do is I'm call, going to call this 3.5 at the end. Right, and we're going to save that. So I know for future reference, if I select the one ending with 3.5, 
be taking off runway 35. Alright. So that takes care of that. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole flight planning thing in Sim Toolkit Pro, it's not necessary. Uh, I'm not going to log it for uh, the logbook purposes. This is literally just um, to show you guys how to do a quick circuit, how to use the saved states of the switches and of the, the flight. You know, just to fix up the previous video where we only had half a story. So just bear that in mind. All right, so we now have the basics that we need. We can continue. We can now go LPPR, LPPR, and we can actually import the read for us. Uh, this is my personal flight number. I'm going to activate and execute. Please make sure to put the runway in there. Uh, the best way of doing it for me is going to the departure selecting runway 35 execute all right we can also just to make sure many one west we can just go and cycle that one as well that way we know there's no funnies happening during the import process and we've actually got control i am a bit of a control freak so i prefer to have control there then on the other side uh, we've got the able 5c we need to specify our nav because we're going to use our nav and we're going to use our Kulu and execute hey nico your uh SCKP oh, zone. man i hate it when that happens okay i'm gonna start from the beginning sorry guys i'm so fixated on trying to give you a good show that i actually mess it up sorry guys right Let's start from the beginning. All right, thanks. Thank you. Munir, Munir is there. I believe Munir is there. Good stuff. All right, so let's go back. Let's start again. LPPR, LPPR. Right, SKM. Zero, like I said, that's just my private flight number. We're not flying online, nobody's going to care about that. We're going to execute it. All right, a runway to make sure that it actually imports this route properly, like I said, is we go and we cycle our SID and our runway. So, many one west, just click it. So, it deselects, click it again, it selects it. Same with the runway and we execute it then we go to our arrival all right able 5c that's correct but we need to specify and then guys you've obviously got a vor dme as well and um, that's for another time but we need to specify the rnav because that's what we want we also want akulu all right very importantly this glide slope on and off thing don't touch it the um, FMC code is intelligent enough to know when to switch it on and off. Never ever touch it because that creates a total confusion for the system. And you don't want to do that. So just remember that. So we're going to execute that and then we can run through our legs. Right, a nice little circuit. Wonderful. It takes about 20 odd minutes to fly this circuit. Um, about 20 minutes eight time, approximately, depending, I suppose, on weather and a couple of other things. And it's got a very nice uh, go around facility where you can also practice your go arounds and how to get back to your airport if you use that. Another reason why I love flying this airport. Right, I'm happy with this. I missed something somewhere. I'm seeing something I don't really particularly like, but we'll work through it. It might be a, a, that I messed up some of the presets. We'll fix it as we go on. Right, it does not detect from the data that I'm giving you and the training that I'm giving you. We'll, we'll find the problem shortly. 
Right, so then we go to our preferences. Like I said, we don't want to wait 20 minutes for stuff to load, so we're just going to put in something 0.5 for our reserves. Um, cost index, let's run it on 20. I'm going to go 110. Now, I'm not going to fill in the stop of climb stuff. I mean, we're climbing 11,000 feet. Nobody knows what's there. So let's just skip that. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, for your information, Uncle John is here. Uh, you need to be careful what you say. Ah, okay, thank you, Arkan. Much appreciated. Arkan, they told something bad about you a few minutes ago. For your information, sir, uh, I am complaining to you right now. Right, okay, so we're not going to bother with all the ECLs and stuff, we just want to fly the circuit, that's less than 100, I'm just going to keep it that way. Um, if you want to simulate, uh, you know, the whole ECL temperature, get Topcat, work it out nicely and then you can start playing with these figures. Um, that's not what this tutorial is about today, so we're just going to pass through that, we're going to use a flaps 5, and then we also just going to fill in the blanks there. All right. What else do we need to do to get going? Let's set up our your damper. IRS is all correct. Yeah. Seat belts, there we go. They can be set up to the hour. Ambient lighting. Windshield heat, circulation fan. Not going to do anything about them yet. Then we're going to set our 11,000 there. And if we look at our chart. See there, the airport elevation is 227. And then we're just going to set up 200 over here. Now that basically takes care of the overhead the for us. Right, I happen to know that this preset, the altimeter is 1003, which it is. Right, let's set up the rest on the MCP now. 146. And this one rating is 352 or 51. 51 I think will be according to our FMC will check later. And it is set up. Ooh, guess whose voice I just heard in my head. Pressurization. Virtual sky check says, Nico. Yeah, 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 we'll get to pressurization. We can't do anything. There's no APU running or anything. You can't set this before we get there. Yeah. So, that takes care of all these little things for us. I would like to invite all of you to say hello to uncle john because we missed him today he came too late let's start hello uncle john this is first welcome sir hello uncle john hello everybody hello john hi john Again, sugar. <laughs> I'm shaking my hands, but you don't see me. Because you're not broadcasting. Unfortunately, yes. 
Are you at work? Say again? Are you at work? No, sir. I'm at home. Okay. What's the purpose of the flight? Can somebody update me? Yeah, circuiting. Uh, whether everything is okay in Porto or not, we are going to check right now. Yeah. Um, Uncle John, I made a video a while ago where we started on uh, Twitch and then we ended up on YouTube because Twitch wasn't capable of carrying the video properly. So what happened was um, I started getting queries from people saying, but where's part one? They missed out on it. They don't know what I'm talking about. So this is a rerun of it all and me basically just um, starting from scratch. You know, to make a nice all-in-all -all video. Hello, Xavier. Thank you for that update. Yeah, no worries. Christer says hello to you. Yeah, Christer also said hello. Hi, Christer. Sorry about that. Right, Mac, I need you now. I'm here. What is this instrument switch it's talking about? I know I fiddled with all these switches before we started, but as far as I know, I put everything back in place. What on earth is that? Oh, there it is. It's that one. It's the IRS one. <laughs> there you go, it's that one. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> okay. But that's interesting because this morning I said to EW when I did the test, that one did not want to stick. And this time it did. So I'd better ah. update him. I better tell him it did. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, all right, all right. We're all good. We're all good. If you don't use your checklist, sir, this is happening. Why don't you use your checklist? Um, uh, there's two reasons, but let me quickly answer Deep Space. Deep Space. I never saw your message there. I don't know when it came in. I just figured it out. Thank you so much. You obviously know what you're talking about. I really appreciate your assistance there. Um, I wish I saw the message earlier, uh, but I didn't. Sorry. Uh, I apologize. Um, Arkan, I'm not using the checklist because the stuff we're talking about now is not in the checklist all right the stuff we are talking about here is higher grade mathematics it's not your average thing this isn't something that just anybody is going to use you know your typical guys using this are the cockpit builders you know the guys who are ex-pilots who have had some training who understand what they're doing you understand um, i know of a couple of flight simmers who, who also want to know how we works and that's why i'm showing you guys you know because there's merit in it there's, there's there's a lot of things that you can do with what i'm showing you but it's not in my checklist it's in the fcom so if you have an fcom take the fcom read it it's there it will tell you all right i think well, it's Gentlemen. not in the quick checklist did you say you've got to look at the different levels yeah mac volume before you volume. get to that that I said it's not in the quick checklist, but it's probably in the in-depth checklist. Exactly, exactly. This this would typically be part of the first officer's uh, pre-flight story, you know, um, running through, making sure, the acceptance of the aircraft checklist kind of a thing. If I understand correctly you, Nico, mm -hmm. you make some mistakes consciously to explain us. Yes. Yeah, I also do that, but it's all, look, if everything goes plain sailing, you know, there's an old saying that the calm sea doesn't make a good sailor. You've got to think about this. You've got to, you know, work it out. I honestly had to think hard about this one. And as I looked up, I noticed the IRS was out. And through Bob, this morning it didn't want to stick. I tried my best and I told DW, ah, that one's not sticking. And there it did. You know, so I'm sitting with conflicting information in my mind. I had to work out, and it's part of the thinking process, part of working it out. So, anyway, okay, we made it. We made it. So, Noel, good afternoon. Uh, welcome. 
I'm glad you can make it with us. Uh, for all practical intents and purposes, I think we are basically ready to call pushback and go. I mean, we didn't use any doors or, you know, uh, equipment. We can just call him, let him come, push, let's go. All right, so let's quickly look at the safe flight situation. Um, you can use this facility to save your flight and the condition of your aircraft literally anywhere on the ground in the air doesn't matter the only condition that I am aware of is for you to uh, load in other words to press one of these green buttons to load that state is the engines needs to be running all right so I, I would also guess then it would be better once the engines are running to save the state instead of without it that is just something Zebo mentioned in passing by to me so I'm happy guys if you see anything I did not do uh, you are welcome to inform me but for now I'm gonna call the duck let's get going ground to cockpit tow is driving up Nico, there is coffee in the cup, you have to drink it first before start. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Guys, just before we go, I think just for our own convenience, this is literally just a visual aid. It will have no bearing on any of the approaches that we do, but just as a visual aid, I think I'm just going to set the VOR quickly, which is this 114.1. set up that GLS code to make an EGNOS approach one of the approaches will be EGNOS right so we're going to use 92423 we're going to enter it into that position 9243 right there is a very 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 important special announcement so listen to this one never ever have your GLS active at takeoff because it will cancel your L Navi nav. Alright. I'm not sure if it's a bug. I mentioned it to Zebo. Uh, I haven't heard back from him. Um, he was on stream where I did discuss it with him. Um, so that when that GLS code go, goes and uh, sits in the active position you do not have any authority over L Navi nav. So just be careful with that one. Keep the VOR there. Once you are in the air in the circuit you can switch over. Okay, so please if it is a bug, obviously you'll fix it. If it's not a bug, you've been warned. Uncle John? Uncle 
Because John is watching movie. Okay. Alright, well, I think we're done then. Let's go. Let's push. Starting pushback. You may start the engine. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Now is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed and signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Right, so I think what I'm going to do is just pull my flaps, um, make sure they settle and then I'm going to save my first flight state. So in the event of recreating this flight you don't have to go through that whole first 20 minutes of setting everything up it's just going to be here right there's the pin let's get our taxi light on flaps is set so what we do is we click on save flight number one now i'm just going to press it the second time because it makes me feel better i don't think you really have to do it but it's an you know just a placebo effect i suppose Alright, so we've saved flight option number one. If we at any point in time select that button, the green one, it will reload this state and we will find ourselves exactly where we are right now. Arkan? Yes, sir. Look at my windshield here on the side. Do you see these blocks? This is what we were talking about earlier. So there are still some left, but it's not as bad as it was. See, I see, sir. That is what was absolutely all over this one side and here at the bottom and a couple of other places here on the instruments. That's what was taken away.
No, it does. It saves your FMC state. It saves the Alnavi nav state. Everything for you. Um, I've used it with great success. Um, earlier today, I actually flew with one of the real world pilots. And we were doing uh, a flight into Donkatin um, in Honduras, and uh, I used this flight uh, save state quite extensively to get the landing correctly because the first time I went into Donkatin I crashed well didn't crash really I just went over the runway I couldn't stop in time I was too high and too fast for that runway and the best way to then practice the circuits is to go back to a previous saved state so I made myself one and I started flying circuits there and eventually I had four good landings behind me in fact five at the end of the day this morning that, that I manage to get in. This is a great training tool guys and this is why I thought of just redoing this video properly and just running through all the motions so we don't have some parts missing and then everybody should be able to understand. Have a good flight. All right, so in your runway entry procedure, you can just go through all the normal motions, make sure everything is set up correctly. Everything should be fine. I mean, if you wanted to, you could really actually click that button again. Let's actually press it, then we don't even have to taxi. So the next time we, you know, load this flight. We're immediately going to be in this position right here, configured as is. Thank you for uh, subscribing there, Dave. Welcome to the family. Right, let's go. Approaching three, five. And command A is now on. Make sure our GLS didn't slip in there. No, nope, we should be fine. 1000. Get up at 11,000 and if there's any questions thus far you can just and if there's any questions thus far you are more than welcome to ask what I am going to do is I'll wait for the turn after the turn coming back somewhere here I'll probably save the uh, save flight number two state um, so that we have a bit of a, a downwind and a run in if we need to fix a mistake somewhere got time to play with because it's a the, like I said it's just a circuit it's not a, a very long distance flight so we don't want to end up short
as we go. Alright, so that was a nice easy climb just up to 11,000. Just good enough to get us through the 10,000 mark for lights and all those simulations. To force us to use a bit of our pressure rotation, although it's not uh, that detrimental at this altitude, it could very well be. So it's just a nice practice run. Romeo, welcome, welcome. Thank you for the subscription. Welcome to the family. Right, so what I'm going to do, just right here, I'm going to save a flight uh, number two. This uh, save flight situation number two. So we've got one at the threshold, one over here, and um, if we have any issues, we can always come back right here. Um, no, let me show you. Inside of explain, you've got your output folder, and then you've got situations. Yeah, inside of explain output situations, uh, there they are. Okay, so what you could do, and I have done this before. Um, I actually deleted it the other day because what sometimes happen is um, Zebo changes the structure of the files because of the updates in the Zebo mod and then they are not compatible with a newer version so let's call it just for argument's sake they are savable and usable in the same version or until such time as Zebo says you know that you need to uh, start from scratch. Um, it's happened a few times where it's changed the structure. So what I uh, did in the past is I would put Baro for instance, that was one of my saved flight situations. I would simply make a copy right and the idea would then be you go in there, you copy this, you come back here and you just paste and overwrite these ones because it will not read from the subfolder. Um, but you can definitely, you can save these ones and reuse them in Adfinitum uh, today, tomorrow, the next month, however long it's valid. Alright, and that's the validity will be based upon Zippo's code structure and when he decides to change that. I hope that makes sense. Alright, so save safe flight number three i'm going to basically quickly do the uh, descent planning um, it's just a circuit so i don't need to work out anything yeah i'm going to go for flaps 30 we're going to put that into position um, that's about all we need to do there we need to look at our chart um, let's do the gls approach first so let's put the gls lpv approach first and then look at what the chart tells us so we are going to run on a decision height of 480 over there for that one going to put 480 on the barrow there and like i said i do actually know that the preset is hitting one double o three so we put one double o three on standby already for the ultimator uh, we're going to use auto brake. Ah, doesn't matter really. We're not gonna really taxi around anyway. So let's just use number two. Um, anywhere before you need them, uh, the only limitation, Krister, is that uh, you can't have it on during takeoff because it cancels the L, L nav and V nav. So I literally just waited until I was airborne. Uh, this is as good as me preparing for uh, the descent, which usually happens at about 100 nautical miles from top of descent. You can switch it on, uh, then it's not a problem. You just can't take off with it. 
at this moment. Like I said, if it's a bug, Zebo will fix it. If it's supposed to be that way, then you've also been warned, so... Alright, so I think everything is set. I don't need to do much. Um, what I'm going to do now is just quickly press the safe light number 3. Um, make sure it's there. Alright, and then what's going to happen is... Oh, you know what? This is something. Look, this is now you can fix this. Alright, so for the GLS approach, I'm going to set my altimeter to 480 plus whatever it will be to get to the nearest 100 which will be 500 I'm going to set it to 500 and then I'm going to quickly save that thing again alright because I clearly forgot to set my uh, descent altitude so there we go so safe flight number 3 now incorporates uh, the 500 there ok so we set if we need to come back to this flight um, we are simply going to press that load flight situation just made sure it is saved um, and we'll be back exactly where we were right now so this is a good place to do this hello core welcome welcome right so flight number one was at the threshold flight number two was uh, approaching downwind and flight number three was effectively waiting for top of descent and that's what we're going to wait for now there we've got our cut back on our power right what we need to quickly look at is what is this course heading uh, I need reflux Alright, so what is important from now on is obviously watching your speeds. Make sure you're all within the required speeds uh, of operation that is required. Uh, start using your flaps and then just let the aircraft do its thing. Hello Sentinel and hello uh, Krister, Krister um, thank you so much, uh, much appreciated, thank you for the tip there. Uh, 
you are Nico. special and thank you very much for sharing that. Yes, Arkan. I have to go, sir. Uh, I need to do some work here. Okay, sir. Okay, that's fine, Arkan. Have a, have a good flight. See you later. 100%. Bye bye. bye. Right, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to save flight number four right here. Right, so if we need to come back to the approach, it's going to be easier to start here to do the next approach than it is going to be to fly the whole circuit. So we uh, are going to start right here. Right, there we have the GLS identified right now, the EGNOS, I beg your pardon, uh, for the RNAV 35, uh, course heading 351. That's it. Okay, with this circuit and this approach specifically, it's very important, like I said earlier, to watch your speed. Once you see the speed reduction happening, it's imperative that you follow suit because otherwise you're going to run out of time. Um, it, things start happening very fast from here on. So, my standard operation here would be to wait until about 235, then go for flaps 1 already, so it assists the aircraft in slowing down. Please don't overspeed on your flaps so they break, so keep it within the operational limits. But 235 is a good place to pull the first one and just to assist the aircraft to stop. Um, you can also see my speed brake is deployed because we do not want to overrun um, the miles that we have left. Yeah, Krister, that's what I do, man. Thank you so much for being here and sharing it with me. Eh? there still keeping my speed brake out we need to slow down nicely and before we go to 15 we need to retract that speed brake shortly we'll have to arm it uh, to make sure it's available when we land right there we are now it is armed Right, so PR542 is our final approach fix. We need to be ready to, uh, well, we need to be configured when we get there or before we get there. So I'm going to go flaps, uh, well, gear down, flaps 15 in that order. Always gear down first for me. Right, and then I'm going to pull the last two notches of flaps because we need to land on flaps 30. Verify that we are on flaps 30, and you can see our diamonds for the Egnos. It's very nicely in play there, and we just sit, watch, enjoy, stand it when necessary. There you go. Thank you, Kristen, for that. Appreciated that as well.
right, I need to sit upright to get my feet on the pedals here. So in preparation for descending further, our go around altitude will be 6,000 feet. So let's put it up to 6,000 now. When I get about here, I always match my hardware throttle indicators that uh, those little triangles over there, the blue ones, to match with where my throttle is at. So at the point where I disconnect the auto throttle, um, I don't have to go and search for it and go move my levers up and down to get some traction. Um, Christer, there are two, two times. Do you see here is a white line that's creeping up on the side usually um, when you see the white line you are safe you can set up your go around altitude the moment you start seeing that line I did it a little bit earlier because I was below the 6,000 already you, you cannot set 6,000 when you are that's above 6,000 you can set it when you are below it the Boeing is not going to stop in its track and then start climbing again so um, it's a bit more riskier I would say but uh, I mean it is doable so I, I just jumped the gun a little bit and I raised the altitude a little bit earlier because I know that the aircraft is going to continue the descent approaching three five but the white line that you see there that's fail safe you can you can any at any approach the moment you see that white line come up it doesn't matter what approach it is ILS or whatever you can actually click it four hundred approaching minimums now we just let it settle. 300. Minimums. 200. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. 10. Alright, okay, so now for the kicker. Let's see if this thing works. Alright, so let's click on load flight position number four. Thousand to go. Thousand, thousand to go. There we go. So now we are on our approach. We don't have to fly the whole circuit again. What I am going to do now is I'm going to do an Ian approach. So we're going to do LNAV, VNAV approach, normal. RNAV basically 
and there you can see the Zebo has identified that Ian is capable and it's got the whole approach programmed for us. What we can then do is we can have a different uh, altitude on the MCP. Let's get SDKP up to show you guys that story. So we're going to do an RNAV and uh, uh, LNAV ENAV mode we can go 540 for the decision altitude but we need to go mandatory 3000 at PR 542 so we've dialed in 3000 we need to just quickly up our uh, decision altitude oh, hang on a second I missed that now right, so I'm just going back there actually starts the descent. I think I held it up, I did the knob typically. Something happened, I just held it up. Right, so let it ride. You can actually pull flaps one, pull the speed brake again. Uh, GLS we're going to change then we set five hundred and forty will be there. I don't think this would have changed it. I don't know. I just think it didn't take the actual descent there, which is fine. Um, guys, sometimes it does happen. I just want to warn you. Sometimes you need to press the load flight uh, two or three times. I've never had to press it more than three times. But just make sure when you press it that it loads the way you want it to load. It's not fail safe. So if you need to press it two more times, do it. You know, Like I had to do just now. There you can see it's, it's obviously working. But sometimes you just have to press it. Know that second or third time all right so now we've got the descent altitude mandatory for 3000 at the final approach fix and we can see that uh, Ian is available we are descending and we are slowing down I'm going to pull two more notches off flaps and then you will see I'm going to use because this is now an R nav that we're going to fly in an Ian approach mode um, I'm actually going to use the approach button like we would in an ILS. Hello Al Babino. As usual my friend, you never disappoint. I tell you, you rock solid, eh? Always, always. anymore right now going to descend a little bit more <laughs> cool all right there we coming up to the next waypoint we turning on our approach obviously going to descend I'm going to go to my standard atmosphere already uh, we can intercept the ILS so to speak in the Indian configuration there you can see it's uh, taking the fact and the glide path is um, uh, active so there we go now we're simulating an ILS approach with RNAV um, Usually, when you get the confirmation here at the top left on the PFD, um, it's available. If you don't get anything there in terms of your runway and the course heading and things like that, then it's not available. It will just say I'll nav enough. But when you've got all the rest of the goodies coming up, then it's safe to say that you've got it. So let's go gear down, flaps 15. Right, keep your eye on the MCP if you need to bug the speed down. There are rules and things determining whether you are in control or the aircraft is in control. But always keep your eye on it. If it doesn't slow down, you have to do it.
So it's keeping us at 3000 because it was a mandatory altitude and it should start to descend there after it should. Doesn't look like it is doing it, that's my only concern. Looks like we're going to lose this glide slope. So we live and learn. Potato. It depends on how far you want to go. Um, it's going to give you a large chunk of earth for four terabytes, but it's not that big. I've got a six terabyte and it's already full. And I've got partial US, partial Europe, partial South Africa. So uh, four terabyte is not that much. Uh, 16 zoom level, you could get a little bit more than I got on 16. Oh, sorry, on 17. I'm using 17 mostly. Um, you'll, you'll have to determine yourself by the areas that you want, you know, what you want to do or not to do. Right, so I've clicked that approach button again. Let's see. Hopefully it takes it this time. doesn't then obviously I need to tell Zebo because it's supposed to definitely I've got limited 18 zoom level authors I don't have that many of them As far as I'm concerned, I'm set for landing. It looks like the LNAV enough is actually working now. So let's see if it takes them here. Because it needs to hold us at 3000 or cross us at 3000 there at BR 542. The fact that the diamond, vertical diamond, is showing full, but it's not showing GP captured, is it? Yeah, but we'll see just now. There's the fact. It said GP. It's active, it's active but yeah. it's not captured. Yeah. Maybe. There, go. there it is, there it is. It actually said it earlier as well. It said it's, there's your black yeah, okay. yeah. 
so I'm not sure if this could be a little bug, but it's okay, then at least we found it in the tutorial now. Because, um, I mean, whatever I'm doing is correct, it's just not, it didn't yeah. respond before. That's it could true. also be just that one of the scripts didn't load properly in the save, you know, load flight situation. So we'll have to check it out now. There's our 3000, we're going through that. Yeah, we're going definitely, it's, it's going down now. Looks like it. Looks like yep. it's, it was just a load error or something. It's definitely taken it now. There you go. So yeah, there you can see Ian is actually working. The q and has got nothing to do with it in reality, Krister. Um, it shouldn't have. Let me put it to you this way. Um, it looks like it is going down a bit slower than the glide path anyway. So we'll check it. Um, if it if it doesn't work properly, then I'll just tell Zebo he'll fix it. Uh, but I've done this many times and it, it, it really works very, very well when it does work. Yeah, no, no, much appreciated, Krister, but it shouldn't have anything to do with it. Feet stabilized, Mr. Perch on the seat set. Yeah, I don't think what that's do going to solve it here. Yeah, what um, are your throttles set at, Nico? Just out of interest. Um, my throttles are at idle. Um, if okay. you look at the dials, all right. At I'm, idle. I'm just double checking. I was just wondering whether it was an interference from Mac, the hardware. But I understand, but look at this. Look at this. Visually, we're on the poppy. We're perfect on the poppy. Yeah. So it looks like the actual GP is drawn to low. You understand? Now we're a yeah. little bit high, but I mean, generally speaking, we were literally, as I was talking to you, we were on the poppy, perfect on the glide uh, slope, um, but we were not on the glide path. So I think that this might be a little bug we've just discovered. Think. Hello, call. Hello, hello, hello. Right. So, anyway, that is that is in a nutshell. Uh, the, there's nothing wrong with the theory, but I'll query with Zippo if there isn't a display issue with a uh, GP there. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, Angel, don't worry, don't worry. Um, all right, let's do let's do something else. Let's. Kill Bixby. 
my cell phone just activated. Don't know what Bixby wants from me. Let's let's go back. Let's do this now. Uh, let's put some rain on. That's me go. That's me go. Place. Right, we're going to use the GLS again, that's fine. To decline man. Come back. I know this may sound dark, uh, but maybe you'll need to do the complete circuit good. and take yeah. off. So that we can disregard it being any influence from the low safe yeah. flight situation. Yeah, 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 gotcha. Um, Mac, let's try it from this position. Uh, and let's oh, see. yeah. We may have to do it off by. Yeah. We'll do a couple of tests. Uh, but if I do the GLS one now, that one worked anyway. So let's see if the GLS takes again. Um, and let's also just quickly put our fixes in. Angel, just um, make sure you press your control F5 every now and then to make sure you've got it right. And you won't miss anything. Right, so where are we at? Yes, sir. Uh, that's what it is. That's the weather radar acting up now. We've obviously got enough water to reflect now. Krister, all I know about this weather radar, because remember this is the default laminar research one, yes, that um, you need a lot of water. There is very limited data reps available uh, for Zebo to work with and that's one of the things that 
laminar needs to upgrade to get a proper working weather radar. Mac, I said I wanted to do GLS, but it's silly because we know it works. Let's do the EN again, just as a last try. Then at least we've also got three uh, tries to show Zebra. Come watch the video. Yeah, sure. There's a subtle difference this time, Nico. Notice you're chasing the IR, uh, the glide path from above. Um, it's just because we took a longer run at it, Mac. Yeah. Oh, um, so let's very well be that that final save point where we're trying to restore to is just not allowing enough time to do the calculations at the wrong yeah side that's the what I'm that's yeah. what I was trying to get at Understand. so that's why I said let's dump the GLS idea we know it works so let's go for it again when we test in there or Basically, a few things that we need to check out for. Number one, we need to get the correct intercept altitude at the FAF, and we need to make sure we press approach so that it busts the altitude and it doesn't stay there. Because if we do a normal normal LNAV, VNAV, RNAV approach, you need to set the MCB altitude to minimums, otherwise, it's going to block it. It won't descend below whatever is set over there. And the whole trick is to use the approach button to get it to bust the altitude. So, couple of things we need to look out for. Actually says fuck and GP is, is now alive and see the Hello Captain Bebka, welcome. But there was a rig reset something happened something there on yeah. the Still on the um, VNAV path there, but now we still. And it's dropped it. Yeah. Okay, but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, hold on a second. That's the FAF, right? We need to be at 3000 there. That is the altitude limitation. That is a requirement. Now we've reached the FAF, so now uh, everything else should be there.
then go down, but look, it looks like it's dropped the GP. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because it went off scale it did. It did. below, and I have a feeling there was something in that descent. You, because I was under the impression you were never supposed to exactly. I know capture a. I'm just wondering whether you had, whether it's programmed in to get the erroneous signal. That's. No, I don't think so. Yeah. 2500. <laughs> that is handsome. Anyway, uh, that's not gonna do us any good now. This one, Mac. Afraid so. Go around. I'm sorry. No, what we need to do is I need to get you both to look at this. Um, but the other thing, why there was the sudden big jump on the. I don't know what switched where it would. Yeah. Look, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to our. Um, one double oh three on the Pascal D. We're going to instead of keeping it high and waiting till the last moment to switch over, let's switch over before. And I mean, there is a high difference between the one zero one three and one zero zero three. Maybe that's what we're yeah. missing here. Maybe ah, that's why yeah. we're missing it because we stayed too high too long. That was what caused the jump, I've realised now. Yeah. Just to have a nice evening. Mac, I'll have to ask Steve to look at this because currently we are not in the city. We're stuck at uh, 11,000. Uh, I was trying to get 143. What's it? Um, no, 240 on your speed. Yeah. Well, that's a wee now issue. Yeah. Yeah, it's stuck this time. It's not descending yeah. at all. Okay, guys on, st on stream, I'll make you a deal. When Zippo fixes this, we're going to do this again. I'm not going to keep this video then. There's no point. So, if you guys want to download it, download it, I'll delete it tomorrow. Uh, just to give you 
guys a chance, but I'm not gonna keep it. There's no point. Uh, once it's fixed, we'll come revisit this and we'll do it again. Uh, she's not descending, Mr. Mac. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether the save state. Yeah, it's got something to do um, with it. Perhaps we need to consider redoing the command day and the auto throttle just to trigger it into action, maybe, or something. I don't know. There's something, it looks, feels as if something's hung up, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like 3,000 foot above our glide path. Um, right, What's no, the well, warning now on your ND? Gone again. Yeah, no, just complaining about altitude and things. Um, Mac? Yeah. This is kind of disappointing. It, well, it, yeah, it, I will try and do something similar in my aircraft somewhere else um, and see That's whether um, I get the same result. I must admit, I haven't tended to use the load safe flight situation. That's so. One thing that is um, a problem for me is the fact that we're climbing. The moment I press the load flight situation, it climbs. Okay, so I've cycled the auto throttle, VNAV, LNAV, as well as uh, Command A. Let's see if it's better now. Let's switch over. This is my last try. Guys, if it doesn't work, we'll end the stream there. Like I said, I'll remove the video. There's no point in having something like this floating on the internet. I hate it when other people leave stuff like this floating around. So uh, we'll reconvene in a week or two's time or whenever and then you know we'll redo it from scratch. I do apologize for the here at the very end, but at least the GLS worked and the actual circuit it was very nice. I would have a word with maintenance when you get on the ground, Nika, just tell them there's a problem. Yeah, they need to dig into this. That's not descending. Um, still, um, everything went well up to a certain point in that video and then some of the people involved started using some foul language and uh, I can't keep a video like that if um, if it's not family friendly there's no point in having such a video available I don't want to link my name to something like that so I just deleted the video it's like this video now I don't want to link my name and the good work I've done to something that doesn't work you know it's 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 not what I want um, so I'd better delete this and we'll start over 
uh, we need the easement. Right, well, it's catching back up again. I see now. I see. I was totally freaking flawed when I saw this just now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, whether it's the fact that, that what needs to be done in the background, it takes time for the FMC to catch up with it. Yeah, I don't know. Look, I've done this circuit a thousand times. I have yeah, done I this very procedure as many times. This is the first time this has happened. So all I can think of is that Zippo needs to know about it because he needs to find out, you know, where yeah. something is. Have you done this since he went to C++ on this element? Yes. You know, yeah, I did this. I did this like a week ago. I flew the same circuit, same scenario, over and over and over. It worked perfectly. Yeah. So it's in the last two or three versions where something yeah. changed now. And that, my friend, is why we test these things. We went there. Yeah. That's why you're here, Nate. Yeah. So there's the approach button. We are below the glide slope, Mac. Do you agree? Look there. It says there, I'll now fact is yeah, on. Yeah, no, is you're, on. Be you're below it this time. Last time you were above, above it. it. And the difference is I went down to proper QNH before that thing went down below us. Let's see. Maybe it works now. Maybe it's a classic case of an idiot flying the plane again, you know what I'm saying? No, I don't think so. I think it, because it, it's been, you've tried this three times now, and each time it has been different about when it was doing its descent, etc, etc. What's the transition altitude here? 4,000. Okay. <laughs> Still, now I'm not ordering myself, I'm actually making a joke. Um, it's so easy to make a small mistake, you know, and if it is because I didn't switch the Q&H quick enough, that's one thing. Um, I did notice a few issues with the load save state here, um, the load flight state. Um, like, I mean, I physically in this one, Mac, the other thing I did differently was I cycled auto throttle, VNAV, LNAV, as well as Command yeah, A. Exactly, you yeah, exactly. So I yeah. made sure that the whole autopilot system got reignited, which in the previous two attempts I did not do to the full extent. You understand? The first time I didn't do any, the second time I did the LNAV, VNAV, and now I did. Well, this is it. I just, and I mean, in, in the real life, you wouldn't be just approaching it from a safe state. No, By the way, there's also that talking point about when you are clear to a lower level, you can actually set, set the QNH. QNH for the lower level. That's how we fly in the real world, but in the sim, that seems to be... Ah, you know one of these? No, no. Yeah, so it was on sale. Still good, good. I have no interest in it, so I didn't spend my money. That's the go. Oh, look at that lightning. I 
wants me to go. And it hadn't captured either. Well, it Should shouldn't it. capture until the faff. It, it should actually only capture at the faff point. Because oh, the, is it? Right. You know, that, okay. that I that thought the owl nab should have called on. That's should, moved, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, that should have. Let's see. It bust it busted the altitude. So it is going down. So the app button is working. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I think Zipa needs to watch this. I'll send him a note. Don't do our look at me. Destroy the video evidence tomorrow evening. Could it be just the FMEs that are out? Should it be out? Yeah, I see it's still on, but it should actually use it, uh, Mauricio. It should actually have gone to full VAC and GP now. It's yeah, still following it, it's still doing it, but it's, it's not following right. it, but it's not given the correct PFD reader. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, find a, a nice big hole, have you? Yeah. Well, it's not given repeatable information, and it's not working every time, John, at the moment. What, random? Yeah, it's got random ways of handling this. Is it the reload process for the scripts, Nico? Probably. I don't know, the I killed it. <laughs> yeah. See, there we go. I mean, we've had... It's been a different indication each yeah. time. Admitted we've tried one or two switch changes, yeah. but... Um, Is that anything that to do with the save feature? We don't know, we don't that's know. the question. The only way to really find it is to, to to see if it is the save feature that's not working. Is to literally stop this flight, restart the explain, um, start from scratch, do the circuit again. Do, do it at least twice. No, you, you can do it with once. Once you should be able to tell it because the GLS worked perfectly with Egnos, but um, we lost the plot now when I clicked the approach button. It just went bad. Okay, I said twice purely just to confirm 100%. Yeah. This is why we were questioning about perhaps off stream when we finish. We need to do the whole circuit again, John. <laughs> well, agreed, agreed, totally agreed. Okay, okay, let's do it this way. Um, how many guys are on stream with us? Would you guys like to see? Then we quickly do it. Let's just see. Uh, let's put up some hands. How many guys do we have on stream tonight? 13 guys. Would you guys want to see me redo it quickly? Let's do it from scratch. I'm game, but... Uh, You're not on stream. You're not on stream. You're I know. Hand. I was just going to say, John, that... Let's have some votes from the audience. Yeah, well, there's one. Okay. So I've killed the X-Plane. And um, I'm going to restart my X-Plane. And while it is restarting, I am quickly going to fetch myself a big glass of cold, cold drink of some sorts. I don't know what's in that. And, and I assume everybody in the house in here is, a, is yes, 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 yes. That's yep. five so far, John. Ah, that's good enough for me. Gents, Carried. I'm restarting. Uh, there you can see explains restarting. I'm going to go grab a cold, cold drink just to have something to drink because my throat's getting dry now.
all this talking and then we'll do the the whole thing without using the saved state i think it's also worthwhile for zebo to see then um let's do it let's put it on video and we can get i would have ordered it for you but there you go no 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 don't upset the missus now already again so early on she's very peacefully quiet in her little corner I haven't upset her. No, no, I know you haven't. I said, don't you upset her because she's peaceful now. Just leave her, you know. I'll go fetch um, the gold ring just now. Uh, You've got okay. seven boats for, to go for it now, Nick. Awesome. Let's start on that runway. We don't have to do the whole thing. Oh, even Paul is here. Hello, Paul. Oh. Hey, how was your day? Um, peaceful and frustrating in turns. So, oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, I had a testing time and then had a bit of a nap, which explains why I'm so late. And oh. I don't know whether I've missed anything good or not at this stage. Okay. When I joined, oh right, I'm gonna I'm gonna burn the video and uh, salt the earth. But now it's gone interesting again. So I don't know what I've missed. Yeah, we don't know. We'll tell you afterwards what we think would happen. Currently, the vote is out. Hello, Mursat. Um, we think that the save state situation isn't working properly because when we did the initial circuit and we used the EGNOS code, the circuit was proper. It was wonderful. Great. When I used the save state, it obviously appeared to be working until such time as we realized it's not catching the glide path at all. So um, we're going to... Try and set that straight. I was drawn in by your teaser on Facebook. Fix for an old video and some other interesting stories. <laughs> yeah. We've got a couple of interesting stories now. Okay, gents, let me just go grab something to drink. I'll be back now. How's everybody doing? Intrigued, brain tapping at the moment. So just to get it clear in my head, we're still on 42.6, are we? No. Yes, that's still no, the latest no Zeebo one. No, and I just checked. He hasn't sneaked a new version out while Nico's streaming. We went through initially about the initial differences and the different states, Paul, that you now have the option to load into the EFB. Um, that was the introduction. And then we were progressing to doing load saves of situations so that you, you know, do a certain and set up of approaches or whatever. Oh, I and, see. And then it was testing the different approaches from one of those safe states where we've now not getting repeatable results and satisfactory outcomes. So it's a case of going into testing mode now. All right, I understand. Is that a fair way of describing it, John? Gents, I'm back. I am back.
flight attendants prepare for departure, cross check and all call, thank you. So, Mac, you've got an eagle eye. On the Egnos approach, was it displaying the code for the Egnos identifier? Yes. Yeah. So, Pretty soon, we can so back, it wasn't doing that, I don't think. If you look at the identifier, Paul, I was actually looking at it. The last two digits in the code is 23, and it did put the 23 on the PFD. So oh, I, right, okay. I took that for being the identifier. It's the last two codes. The same happens with um, the Ian. It puts 23 as the identifier. Oh, that's great to know. Thank you. Yeah. On runway three five. On runway three five. Uh, right, Nico, can I ask a question? Of course. Why do you even ask? Okay, right. If you can go to the navigraph chart. Should not the identifier for the Egnos be E35A? A. Now that you mention it, that is true. Because what the only thing it had on the PFD was the 23. It had like a space 23. So I just assumed or presumed. Um, but you're actually right, that is the identifier. The reason why it made sense what I said earlier is because I got the same 23 in both Ian and as well as the Ignos approach. But I hear what you say, that's actually a good point. Now, can you remember when you had the, when you did the load save, did you have the Egnos tune then? On runway three, Is it loading on runway with the Egnos? Three, yes, um, for the last two, yes, for those last two. And now that you mention it, I'm wondering if that is not also the reason then why it's not listening to Al Navina. Because it doesn't That's listen to Al Navina in the takeoff, so maybe because it's loading with the Egnos code in. Okay, there's no Egnos code in now. Okay, we won't put yeah. it in because we're not going to use it. So what That's we'll do right. is we'll save the flight the same way and we'll try the same story. Hello, Dimitri. Because maybe that Egnos code is is exactly what the problem is. You are so clever, Mac. Yeah, he's outrageous, Just a isn't thought. he? I mean, I'm trying to remember everything we've gone through, and I'm just trying to see potential problems, that's all. Well, I think that's a very plausible idea. What you've just come up with, that might actually just be the problem, it's because the Ignos code is loaded. Damn it, that'll be so weird. But if that's an answer, that's something see, we can fix easy. Dimitri, sorry, now I can't remember if I said hello to you, but welcome, Dimitri, welcome on stream. In other words, it's only remembering part of the Agnos yes. business and yeah. not remembering and tuning it properly, etc. Yeah. Well, in my eyes, it's downright interfering with El Navinav. Yeah. Maybe that's as easy as that. 
and maybe this video isn't that bad after all having gone through the whole gauntlet i don't want to save it as a tutorial then i'll i'll still redo the tutorial part of it but this was then actually a very worthwhile video <laughs> i'm feeling rather confident on runway three five on runway three five I am back, gentlemen. And you're all welcome. Maybe that's just it. Mac, if it's that um, Ignos code, that GL is function. Um, I'm going to say we have a good team, but I'm going to say it um, anyway. We have a really good team going here, you know that. Well, it's all about teamwork, yeah. And many eyes, you know. Let's save the cell operation until you've done this circuit. Of course. No, I'm not concentrating on storing that engine. So far, so good with all the safe states, Nico. Everything is working as planned. Um, it appears to, but it's not. And this is why we are continuing the stream so that we can try and do some troubleshooting, see where the problem actually lies, because it's really not doing what it's supposed to do. Gotcha. Is anybody else in the YouTube watching got any questions? I think everybody's sitting here waiting with bated breath, seeing what's going to happen.
the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. Paul, I heard your stem, your stem. I'm speaking Afrikaans. Yo, I heard your voice earlier in my mind. Flaps, flaps. Um, it's getting that way, isn't it? Yeah. I was just leaving you to it for a while there. I was gonna also say your damper, I think. Um, I think I remembered that eventually. <laughs> Dimitri, it started off as a bit of a tutorial, it's now turned into a troubleshooting adventure. Um, yeah, it's a mixture of a couple of things. Right, well, unless you see anything that I missed, I don't know that I've missed anything, so... I'll claim ignorance and we'll go, jocks are off. If you get no config warning, we'll worry about the rest in the end. Yeah, uh, we won't rotate. Um, Sercon, yeah, the porpoising has been fixed a couple of days ago last week already. Me and Zippo and the guys fixed it uh, Wednesday last week already. Thursday, Thursday morning. 80 knots. Yeah, see, go dug into his coat and came up with the goods very quickly. Mother Brit. Four hundred. <laughs> no, you know what? Every time. I speak with Zebo, with Twixter, or one of the other real pilots. I learned something. I learned a lot today again. We don't stop learning, mate. It's just, there's too much to learn. And because we don't do this dedicated, like in real world pilots, and you go on a course and you just slog through and you get it over with, we learn bits and pieces every now and then, eh? Right, so I'm going to do the first save. In actual fact, I'm going to make it the second save again. We'll use the same pattern um, once we are on the downwind leg, just around the corner here. We'll do the first save again. This time we make sure there's no whatsoever. There's no ILS because I know ILS messes up RNAV so there's no ILS active, there's no GLS active. No, I haven't, Dimitri. Not yet. Dimitri, I've actually been a bit under the weather. I haven't been feeling well. Strangely enough, right now is the best I've felt in like three, four days now. So um, I, I just took a bit of time off. I slept most of yesterday. I slept a while today again. Uh, just have to take it easy, mate. I mean, I've been burning the candle both sides between work and the. I work eight hours, nine hours a day, and then I put another eight or nine or ten hours into the Zippo, you know. It's kind of caught up to me. I'm glad to hear you're feeling better at this moment. Oh, much better. Important, but this cool thing is nice. Right, so there we go. We can go for the lights already. Once we get to the state of level, we will uh, save flight. Instantly. Go. Um, 
Sarkon, I don't use it anymore, but listen carefully. When I did use it, the only thing I changed, I made sure, number one, I'm in the 738 profile. You have to be in the correct Boeing profile. And number two, I switched off the airframe means. The rest of all the settings in the Xperia Listic for the Boeing is... I just left it. I didn't change anything. It was just normal, standard. Save flight number two is done. It's max black of it. Make it fun. Let's save uh, position number three. That'll give us just that little bit more room to adjust. 
just something we need here, but as far as I know, no, it is it altitude done. The weather looks better this time round than it did <laughs> last time. Yeah. I can make it look worse if you want it. Not particularly. I tell you what, if it works now, it makes Zebra's life much easier finding this one. Well, it would prove that it's to do with how the load save state is saving the information. Yep. Whether it's saving all the required information. Yep. When you think of the variables you're throwing at it, have you got normal radios or MMR loaded and all the rest of it? We're asking a lot. Guys, 342.7 is available. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Thank you, Zebo. He's sitting there laughing. He's ass open. <laughs> if he ever. You're in the air, you're in the air. I'm gonna drop it now. <laughs> You gotta love it. Absolutely. He's probably been listening to what you've been doing and he's already found Fixed the it. corrections. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Be interested to see what the release note said. Tune flight director for level change, VNAV speed, fix bugs, N1, N2 for start shutdown engines. But that's only that for 6. That was for 6. Exactly, I just noticed it. Yeah, I didn't. He's obviously not included it. And he hasn't said anything, so I'll have to ask him. Anyway, let's go down to uh, 1003. Start slowing down, like we said. We're way over speeding now. Wow. No entity, there is no release notes.
Search on Google the Kitpaving QRH for the 800. If it's available, you'll get it. Right, which approach are you doing this time? Then? Yeah. With no, uh, no. Just with the BOR. Yeah, there's nothing else in here. No, that's fine, yeah. See, now that we've switched over the QNH earlier, we're capturing the glide slope properly. Um, what's the PFD saying now? Says L nav no. path. Yeah, no, top left. I'm on about. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Now it says 22. Capture. I don't know what that is. Uh, earlier it was 23. I don't know. Maybe, you know what? That could have been. <laughs> believe it or not, that could be DME. That's miles. I was looking at. Can you believe it? I watched twice at the same time. That's, the, that's <laughs> a DME. That's a coincidence for you, eh? Yeah. Wow. I'm good. I'm telling you, I'm really good. Consistency. Yeah. Or you are just good for asking the same question at the same time, you know. <laughs> that might be it. <laughs> and look at the relationship to the glide slope this time. Yeah. Um, See there, it's now on the final approach course. There, it's gone active, and it's on the glide path. And we're just waiting for that to come active. I swear, Mac, if it's that GLS code, that won't come active until you capture the center point. Yeah, it's armed, but yeah. But this is something I'm going to have to discuss with Zebo. Either he needs to give me the education to understand the reasoning behind GLS, that code switching off the LNAV nav, or he needs to know that he needs to fix it. I've, I'm going to, uh, after you finish streaming, I'm hoping you'll leave it up for a little while. I want to replay it. Yeah, yeah. Um, because what we're talking about now, going back and see whether th that was in play, you know, business about possibly Egnos code interfering and paying more attention to what the PF. D was indicating was like tuned, etc. Yeah. All right. So speed brakes on for the brake max for the fun of it. There we go, glide slope, uh, glide path, I mean, has been captured. Silly toes. I just move it, silly toes. You click on the top middle portion and you move it. Like so. Click there, comes loose, you can move it. Didn't take it, Mac. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It will not take it because of that height restriction. I keep on forgetting about the height restriction. It needs to dive now again. Mm, this is an interesting thing. But we are, we are high. We are high. Yep, I think this Ian is broken. This Ian is not working the way it should be. Because we were definitely correct when we um, enabled the approach button, the Ian is not working in this model. 
Um, then the question now comes. Hang on here. What was? What out should you have set on the MCP? Your faff. When you're doing the other branch, you put your faff in the same direction. Yeah, that's true. I think I'm wondering whether it's that that's the interpretation that's wrong. I don't know. Okay, tell you what, tell you what, tell you what, tell you what. Let's do this. Let's do this quickly. Brr, did, did, did. Thank you, Steiner, for that word of wisdom there. Much appreciated. Let's quickly update. So this is now 0.7. SIBO 342.7. New one. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, Litos, you never have to choose for an Ian approach. You don't have to choose both commands. I've never done it, ever. It's always worked. So I'm thinking this is a bug, but I'll have to talk to Zebo about it. Digo, do you mind sharing your real view settings for this airplane? Yeah, no problem. Take screenshots. Here's your first one. Second one. Third one. Okay, thanks. Okay. Weird. All right, just waiting for the hard drive to stop. On runway, three, five, flaps, flaps. Gonna take a shortcut quickly. Hello, Barry, hello, hello.
on runway 35 on runway 35 Is the duct pressure is everything? <coughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, in a hurry here in the area, I suppose. Eh? On runway three five on runway three five Positive rate. Why are we climbing? Fails to go. Because that's supposed to be just at 11,000. I'm just wondering whether it's um, just taking time for all the scripts and the FMC sure. to become implemented. Sure, but when I cycle my VNAV, look, it's now coming back to where it was. So it's like VNAV for one is not loading properly. Either not saving properly or not loading properly. VNAV seems to have a problem with the save situation. I mean, every time now that I reload, it just shoots up.
Right, well, Mac, it's settled, so let's see what happens now. It needs to slow down and take a bow. Tell you what, if this doesn't work, we're going to all go and fly P3D and we're going to fly helicopters or something else. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> that's Helicopter. A way, that's a way of testing whether John's awake. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Steiner, you were breaking up a bit saying helicopters in P3D. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to say something completely way out of the norm. <laughs> Barry. I just about choked up once when you said P3D. <laughs> Barry, do yourself a favor. In my YouTube channel, go to the Zebo tutorials. Go watch the video called the Flight Director Helper. You need to read it. You need to understand how to engage your autopilot, my friend, and it's all in that video. I explained it in detail. It's alright, I'm just replaying back that implementation of when you loaded that situation. Yeah, I don't know. You can, you can have a look. I've just been winding back as mm -hmm. while you carry on your... I can't see what potential is a problem. I can't see it's anything you've done wrong. That's what I'm getting at. Pilot error. Yeah, I don't know. I put a little too much mac and cheese, uh, oh, ma cayenne pepper on my mac and cheese. Diet over here. Wow. Right, so we are on. And it should bust straight through the MCP altitude, yeah? Yep.
you've got both, yeah, both are. Oh. Now, your son, eh? Lost the guide part again. No, I pressed the button here. Yeah. I, I was talking to my son, and uh, yeah, now we've lost it. Oh, yes, you know what I mean, really. Not what you want. <laughs> I was talking to my son, talking? and my, my thumb literally just touched one of the buttons. I have no idea what button it is. Um oh, it's irritating. Damn it, man. Damn it. <laughs> Is it because you're too tired? No, I was actually a little bit upset. I'm not on it, but, uh, I was concentrating more on him. Bells in the go. Guys, I'll be back in a minute. Um, we'll let the aircraft descend and I'll be with you just now.
don't you guys start a fight on my stream now? This is a Boeing stream, not an Airbus stream. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, red is much better than the old circuit. <laughs> Unless it's the blue sky, I prefer blue sky to a grey sky. You know? Now we're getting interested. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening okay. again. This is uh, your captain speaking. Maraba. How do you say that? Maraba. 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 Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Arabic, sir. But uh, of course Airbus is better than Boeing, uh, we don't need to discuss this point somewhere. So, so you say it's just a fact? Yes, of course. Uh, it's funny. It's not Back. open for a discussion. Yeah. Back with I'm this not slope. saying anything. <laughs> no, um, I want to get your attention, we're losing the glide slope here, this Ian is not working. I'll send um, Zebo a message. Ian is definitely not working. I don't know. I don't know whether right. he took it offline or whether, you know, it's on purpose. He's done it before, you know. You take something offline to fix something else. Right. I must admit, uh, don't get me wrong, we'll try it offline, but I have one suggestion to try, just in case it is a coding error. But we'll talk about it offline. Mac, but I'm tired. I can't do much more. No, it. that's fair enough. I'll try it um, after you've gone off the line. I really anyway. just want to land this plane and go sleep now. Yeah. No, Another no. fact. No, you need to go and get your rest, Nico. Another fact. What's your fact now? Plastic is better than uh, iron. iron. No. no, Zebo is better than any aircraft in the virtual aviation. Yeah. This is the fact. True. Fact, uh, Foxtrot uh, Alpha Charlie Tango is in Africa actually. 2500. Uh, but this is another story. Oh, that's Cape Town International. Yeah. And Fox, Foxtrot Alpha Golf Golf is just down the coast, but we can't do a stream on that because they won't allow that name. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> you were cursing YouTube so much, or no, it wasn't that YouTube, Twitch. it was uh, Twitch. Twitch. Freaking virtue signal. Bunch of ladies. You are welcome, Uncle John. Who what I to told you. He needs to haircut. Uh, yeah, Uncle John. Yeah, yeah. He looks like a hippie. Uh, yeah. He must cut his uh, hair by himself. So, actually, I don't know uh, what will happen if he tries to our ways with Jordan. Jordan, can you imagine to Uncle John uh, with our style? Absolutely. <laughs> Thousand feet stabilized, Mr. Birch altitude set. Okay, let's uh, take the guess uh, of FPM of this landing. No, it only works in Twitch, Arkan. It doesn't matter, just I will write. Okay. 
<laughs> 390. Three, I'll try and eat 600 for you. No, just do it what you do. Um, Mac. Yes. Look at the picture there. Look at the picture. Look where the poppy is and look where the glide slope for the Ian is. That glide path is totally wrong of Ian. Just look wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing is this is where you got a question that you load in another airport as well because is it nav data or is it no, generalization data. no this is probably nav data and it's creating a problem minimum that's what i'm just wondering um this the only thing we can do is delete the nav data files you know let zebo rebuild it and see if that fixes it otherwise log a call with uh, nav um, it's a well, we need to prove that it works at another airport first. Yeah. That's the trouble, it, it leads so, to so yeah. much yeah. testing. Ah, uh, whatever. Alright guys, I'm tired now. Um, I need to go sleep, so... You guys have a wonderful rest of your day, whatever it is that you do. Well, I must say, thank you, Nico. It's been a valiant effort. Yeah. Uh, Did you see um, he left the aircraft in on the runway? Oh, well, not done yet. She still wanted to try and stop. You, you say you are leaving. Yeah, well, I understand that. I can't. I can't. That little orange lever with the black stripes that comes protrudes out from underneath the chair is not there. Please, please, please stop. <laughs> please stop talking tough English for me, okay? I don't understand anything. Just stop your airplane <laughs> on, the, on the gate, sir. <laughs> this thing does not want to stop, Arkan. I'm. Oh, just drive us straight to the pub then. Caution. <laughs> This aircraft is not stopping, guys, at all. It's just going. There's no brakes, at all. What Nothing. happens? No, I don't know. There's no brakes. Brakes is not working. As I you said, you got uh, reverse uh, thrust on. I I had it on idle and I had it on full power, but the the only thing that's going to stop it now is this incline. Um, the brakes is just not working. No brakes. No Try problem. parking brake. Since this is not an Airbus airplane, so it, it is obvious, <laughs> obvious, the result is obvious. Well, if, you, yeah. if you had flown with the Airbus, you wouldn't have such a problem. Is it? Okay, well, we'll see tomorrow. Listen, guys, still I've not got, stopping. it's still not stopping. There's the parking brakes on. I mean, it's still going. What your throttles at? It's in full reverse, full reverse. It's still going forward. Right. It's just not stopping. Buko, you all, should get re get rid of this American style and please come back to European style, okay, yeah, sir? Not just that. So. It looks like my chocks are on. Look there. It looks like the chocks are on. Uh, oh and it's still hat. rolling forward. It's just not stopping. And there's still Dirty. no pub inside. Keep going. Do you see, Uncle John? Do you see? <laughs> it, it's kind of rolling. Yeah. Is that a BOR in the background there? Oh, I don't know. Go Maybe on round see. again the other way. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. oh. That's it's a zero friction landscape. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, Noel's got the answer. It says you have to pay extra for brakes. <laughs> huh. Okay, gentlemen, do me a favor. Go fly the Zebo. See if you can make it stop. Otherwise, there's another bug for us. <laughs> <laughs> then we found the couple. Um, <laughs> oh, this is crazy. Unless the weight is up to a hundred thousand tons. Oh, this is terrible. I think How the runway to break is that serious moment when we were all racking our brains. Anyway, 
Nico, it was not your mistake, sir. I think the runway is short. Uh, so because you you you, you found runway, you descended to runway, you touched to the runway. Yeah. But uh, the problem is runway is short. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was prob- probably coated with diesel or something as well. You know, very slippery. Or, interesting. Know. Interesting. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, ladies, if there are any, you go enjoy yourself. I'm going to go sleep now. This has been too much. <laughs> we'll, ah. we'll, we'll hey, buddy. Thank you. See you. See you, Nico.